records. It was not until the 7th century when churches began to use mechanical instruments in their worship. Now, it is also true that the word acapella, the word acapella, which means singing without an instrument, literally means in the Latin, as the chapel. As they worship in the chapel, as they worship in church. And so at the, at the, uh, the uh, talent show at Cain Ridge back this last spring, Jewel sang in the talent show, and she sang... A cappella is an American patriotic song. She sang a cappella, a cappella, as we do in church. That's the definition of a cappella, as in church. Well, let me ask this question. Is instrumental music an aid to us worshiping God? Is it an aid? Well, first of all, let's define what an aid is. An aid is a means of carrying out a command where the means have not been specified. And we use means all the time. God says, go into all the world. How do we go? Well, we can walk and we can drive and we can fly. There's lots of means to go. And so, so using a car to go or using a horse, that's an aid for fulfilling the command that God has given us. The aid also expedites the act that is commanded. It helps us fulfill that act. Well, an instrument does not help us to sing. <coughs> The instrument helps make music. But that's not what God commanded. God said, I want you to sing. Now, I wear glasses. Many of us wear glasses. Glasses do not aid us in hearing. It aids us in seeing. Some of us wear hearing aids. A hearing aid aids us in hearing, but a hearing aid doesn't aid us to see. Some of us wear, uh, use walking canes. A walking cane helps you to walk, but a walking cane does not help you to see. So an instrument helps to make music, but an instrument does not help us to sing. It does not help us fulfill the requirements that God has given us to teach and to admonish each other. It's a totally separate act. And so if God had simply said, I want you to make music, then we can make music any way we want to. We can shoot off a bazooka. We can come fire 30 out of 6 and if that's what made us happy in worship, if that's all God said, was to make music. But God didn't say that. God said, I want you to make music in your heart. Now, the truth of the matter is, instrumental music does, in fact, create a state of dependency, covering up, even drowning out the defects. In fact, in modern times, you know the reason why instruments were reintroduced into the Church of Christ and then split the body of Christ? It's because people were, say, were saying and complaining, our singing doesn't sound good. Our singing doesn't sound good, so let's bring an instrument. Why? Because it covers up our mistakes. Instead of us going back saying, you know what we need to do? We need to repent and circumcise our heart and start worshiping God out of our heart. That's going to make up for the deficiency. Instead, they decide, well, let's bring in something that's not authorized. And so, the benefit of the organ is to fill the auditorium, and auditorium with sound. To fill it with sound so that people can't hear the mistakes they make. But it does not help us to serve God. So, when people say, I like singing with instruments, really what they're saying is, I like instrumental music. Well, that's okay. We can like instrumental music. But we can't like instrumental music in worship of God. Because there's a big, big difference between what we do in God's presence and what we do out there. And so we see that instruments can drown out the human voice, in fact, to the extent that no teaching and no admonishing, in fact, is even done. When we took the group from the Arkansas out to Cane Ridge, the meeting house, back last summer, these teenagers were getting ready to sing. Uh, but the curator's wife was giving us a tour of the grounds, and she said, are you the group that's with the, are you the non-instrumental group? I said, yes, ma'am, we are. She said, I wanted to tell you, out of all the groups that we have coming here, they have people go there from all different religions, literally. And she said, from all the groups that come here to worship, y'all have the best singing. She said, the reason is because your men sing out. When we are raised up in the Lord's church, to worship God as He is authorized, then we've got one generation, second generation, or third generation. We are raised up singing to God from our hearts with our voices. We're just trained that way. We're trained to worship God from the heart. And so a cappella music, a cappella singing emphasizes the human voice and it encourages and it strengthens and it comforts us because we're singing praises to God, just like He told us to do. 
Now, let me conclude. Presenting some things that really are aids to worship. Really are aids to our singing. For example, number one is our songbooks. You see, we have to sing. That's what God says. In order to sing, you've got to have words. Now, the first couple of songs that the Brother George led us this morning, we sang without words, but we had words before, didn't we? Because we, uh, we have memorized those songs. So we've got to have words, whether they're projected on the screen or whether they're in a songbook or whether they're in flat pages. We've got to have words in order to sing. So a songbook simply aids us in doing that. Example number two is a microphone. If I'm in an audience this size, if I'm in an audience even larger, 3,000 people, I've got to project my voice. If I'm the song leader, and the song leader is the one who decides what number we sing, how many verses we sing, and so forth, the pitch, and so forth, if I'm going to lead singing, I've got to project my voice. And therefore, a microphone aids me to project my voice into something I've got to do anyway in order to fulfill the command that God gave me. Example number three. We have notes in our songbook, shape notes. We've got the whole note, the half note, quarter note, the eighth note. You see, we've got to have, we, we, we all sing with a certain melody, we all sing with a certain pitch. The songbook, the, the notes in the songbook are written to guide us in doing what we automatically do. We've got four part harmony. We've got soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. All of us sing somewhere around one of those four. And so the song is written in a way to, to group those four parts together. We're already going to sing tenor. Whether we sing tenor based on the notes of the songbook or not, we're going to sing tenor. And so those notes in the songbook aid us in fulfilling what we've already got to do to begin with. Example number four. As a song leader, Brother George, let's sing this morning. We've got several good song leaders here. Somebody's got to decide what song we sing. Somebody's got to decide when we start and when we end. Somebody has to decide which verses we sing. Somebody has to decide how many songs we sing. Somebody has to set the pitch for us and keep rhythm and melody and so forth. Somebody has to do that. And so a song leader is aiding us in doing what God has already commanded us to do. And then the fifth example is the pitch pipe. Once again, now I've got a pitch pipe here, and I can use it theoretically. I've got a pitch pipe here. Now, we all sing on a certain pitch. You can't sing. It's like you can't not communicate. If you sing, you cannot not sing on a pitch. Now, it might not be the right pitch. It may not be the pitch that everybody else is singing on, but you're going to sing on a pitch. And so a pitch pipe simply allows the song leader to get the pitch that the, the author of the song wrote in the song. And then you can, you can begin singing. Sometimes the pitch is too high and we can't hit it. We have to get up on the rooftop in order to get it so high. So a pitch pipe aids the song leader in doing what God has already commanded us to do. And so the instrumental music, whether it is the piano or the organ or a guitar or drums or whatever it is, don't aid us in doing what God said to do. God didn't say make music. God said sing. Teach and admonish one another through these psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and sing where in your heart to God. We need to learn from these examples of the Old Testament and do what God has authorized and what God has required of us and nothing more and nothing less.